guys, it's Catherine. Welcome to our March Garden Tips with Kat. I got a lot of fun stuff for you this month, so I'm excited to share it with you. First thing we're gonna start off is I'm over here at our nursery center next to one of our veggie beds that's been planted up for a little over a month now. And so you can see how well our lettuces and kale and cauliflower and everything is growing in here. It's doing really well. There's a lot of color and it's really simple. Once you start getting this established, water it and keep up with it and it's very simple to have a garden at your own house. So what you can plant this month, I've got some seeds here and there's more things in this but I just pulled off some of the things we have on the shelf this month. So we've got squashes. So this is an, a summer squash that you can plant now. Tomatoes, these are some cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are awesome because they provide you with a huge crop. So once you get those planted in, you can literally go out almost every day and pick tomatoes off. So these are great if you're looking for a little easy snack. So just pull off the vine. Zucchini is another great one, super simple. It grows very viney and so it kind of gets big, so make sure you have room for that. So we've got butter beans right here and then we've got snap beans. And most beans, again, unless you're getting a bush variety, are gonna be viney, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you have um, some to grow them up, a trellis or over the side or whatever, just something so that you've got room. I also have here another of our fertilizers. So this is the Garden Tone, which is great for your veggie gardens. You can use this during the whole growing season, but especially when you plant your seeds, you can go ahead and use it then just to give your plants a head start. This has something called mycorrhizae in it, which really helps your roots to grow down into the soil and it really like attracts them down there so that you get much fuller plants on top. So definitely something you want to use. You can mix it with water or you can use it as a granular. and so. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask some of our knowledgeable staff. This also comes with all kinds of instructions on the back. So uh, this is a great tool to use, great for your gardens. It's really gonna take them to the next level. Guys, over here we've got some different um, organic high-end soils that are great for your gardens. Um, we have a few different types, so there's a lot of uh, different things depending on what you're trying to get. One of my favorites actually is back here. The Happy Frog is a general purpose potting soil, but it's a little bit uh, higher in quality than your Miracle Grow, and it's also organic as I said so if you're trying to grow a vegetable garden and you don't want to use chemicals or whatever in there this is a great option for you. Um, we also have um, some black cow uh, topsoil, which if you're gardening here, we have some sandy soil. This is a great one to mix in to kind of hold that moisture into your so soil and also give it an extra boost of nutrients. So this is another great one you can use there. The Wild Earth Mix number three that we have, we also sell in bulk. So if you're looking to do a big garden bed or a couple of garden beds and you have a truck or we can even deliver it to you, um, it's a lot cheaper than just getting bags. So it's a good option for you. Guys, this is our second garden bed in our nursery right here. It's a little bit of a different shape because they made it to fill in between the sidewalks, but it just shows you that you can have one really anywhere, which is kind of nice. They just planted this up this week, so you can see what we have right now. We've got some tomatoes in stock that are already growing. If you don't want to do stuff from seeds, we do have a few different um, vegetables and herbs that you can just go ahead and plant straight in. So we've got tomatoes here, Swiss chard, cilantro, and then another tomato here, and I'm sure they're going to fill in more, so you can check out some more of our videos and see that later on. All right guys, so let's talk annuals. We've got some new fun ones in this month that I'm really excited about because I always love the colorful flowers. So I pulled off some of my favorites and some of the ones that are um, safe to plant right now. We do have a lot in stock, so if you're looking for color, right now is a good time to come in and get some. Um, one of the first ones I picked out is a begonia. So these guys are great, nice and easy. They have a cool um, texture to the leaf. It's almost like succulent-ish um, and they just have some little tiny flowers on them so they're not super showy but they're just a fun one to add into any garden. Um, one of my all-time favorites is the zinnias. So these come in a ton of different colors, shapes, and sizes and these are great if you're looking to do a cutting garden because once they get bigger you can just cut these off, put them in vases. Um, last year I had probably like 15 different ones growing in my garden and every week I was out there cutting them so this is a really nice one for that. Another one we've got here, a draping one, so a good one for a pot, um, is the Bacopa. This one comes in different colors also. This is a white, but I think we have maybe a purple one be behind me back there. So this one is also a nice one um, in your garden. It doesn't have to just be in the pot. So. All right, on this side we have Osteosperium. This one also comes in a lot of different colors. It's a little bit bushier. The flowers are really pretty, a little bit daisy-like. Um, another good one for pots if you're looking for some height in there. But again, you can use it in your garden. 
Then we've got Lantana, and all of these I picked out today just come in a variety of colors. I'm gonna say that with all of them. This is the yellow Lantana, but you can get pinks and purples and whites, um, really any color. These are a nice one because if we don't have too cold of a winter, um, they'll come back every year for you. So these are a good one for if you like to uh, keep it going. So that's a nice one. And then last but not least, we have the Pintas right here. Um, and they also have dwarf Pintas. This one is obviously a little bit taller, but these are great butterfly attractor. The colors are always very vibrant on these guys. Um, and another good one for cutting flowers. So here at our shop, we've got a ton of palm trees in stock. So if you're looking to um, add one to your landscape or you wanna make your house feel really beachy, we've got definitely some options for you. Also this month, you can fertilize your palms. This is another one of the Espoma fertilizers, a really great organic fertilizer for your palms. Again, this is a granular, but you can mix it with water if it's easier for you to do a liquid one. Um, if you have questions about palms, we have our local palm expert, David, and he has lots of videos up on our YouTube page here so if you've got any questions or want more information definitely check those out. So March is a good time for azaleas to do some work on them. Um, you can go ahead and start fertilizing them with an acid loving fertilizer is great. This is the holly tone which is acid loving so you can use it on your azaleas, camellias, hollies. It's a great one for all of those guys. This again is in our same line of fertilizers that we've been talking about. An organic fertilizer, granular, can mix it with water. Also with azaleas, you can go ahead and trim them once they're done blooming now. So right now these are all blooming, but once they're done, you can go in and kind of cut off pieces that might um, just be like sore thumb pieces, or if you're trying to shape it into a hedge, you can go ahead and do that. A fun thing about azaleas is they come in lots of different shapes and colors. So around me, just right in this area, we probably have like seven or eight different varieties. Um, a couple of them are the Formosa, the George Tabor. This beauty right here is the Duke de Rohan. That one's a really pretty one. And then we have Southern Charm over here. And then there are some dwarf ones over here which aren't gonna get much higher than about three feet tall. So you got lots of options with those also. Guys, the last thing I want to talk about today is trimming your citrus. Uh, right now is a good time if they're not blooming. If they're blooming, I would just wait on that because you want your tree to be focused on that fruit production. And so like these guys over here, which are blooming, I wouldn't trim. But the ones that aren't, you can go in. You can, If there's lower branches on your trunk, you can trim those off and take them up. You can also look in and if you see dead branches, which these are in our nursery, so there's not like a lot of dead wood in these, but established trees you'll see if you kind of go in. You might come in and see a dead branch go ahead and trim those out just to help your tree um, and then also you can kind of look and see if there's branches that are hanging down like this guy over here might be one that you would want to trim off because fruit on that you're, it's just gonna weigh it down and it's probably gonna snap anyway so there's a lot for that like I said if they're already blooming hold off on that but some of your ones that haven't started blooming off you can go ahead and trim now here at the nursery for citrus, we've got a lot of different varieties. We have lemons, tangerines, limes, kumquats, oranges, grapefruits, and even on occasion, we've got the fruit cocktail trees. So a lot of good ones to choose from. All right, guys, hopefully you learned some helpful tips today. If you're interested in learning more about what to do every month, keep watching my videos. They'll be up every first week of the month, and you can see exactly what to do each month. Uh, if you have any questions for me, comment below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.